In the last few videos, you've been working with the customer entity and enabling different operations such as create, view, and update from the chocolate store web application. We now have functionality such as user registration and user profile. In this video, you will look at a similar implementation of two new entities, category and product. You look at some differences between implementations and learn about some Spring MVC tags that we'll use in the process. The customer entity that you've used so far is what you would call a standalone entity. You haven't really had to worry about relationships between entities so far. Let's look into that now. We'll work with two entities, category and product. The chocolate store sells products that belong to different categories. When creating a view or an edit page, you need to acknowledge the fact that these two entities are related and work with them accordingly. Let's start with category. The entity has two fields, name and description. As this is the parent entity, you don't have to worry about the relationship with product for now. Take a look at the category controller class in the example code in section four. Things should look familiar. This class is pretty much a replica of the user controller, except that everything user related in user controller like entities, service URLs, and JSPs have corresponding equivalence in category instead. There is however one change. Remember the resource URL for the user is slash users slash user ID. User ID is the user's login name and it's unique. So having that as an identifier makes the URL easily readable and memorable while also guaranteeing that the URL uniquely identifies the user. For some entities, you might not have a unique property like that. For the category entity, you could enforce the category name to be unique. Then we could have category URLs like slash categories slash and the category name. Or you can also choose the primary key directly, that is the ID property of the category. So the URL would be something like slash category slash 1234, where 1234 is a sample category ID. Here in this case, for category URLs, we'll choose the latter approach. You'll notice the change in category slash edit.jsp. Notice that we don't need a hidden ID field anymore. The ID is in the URL already. Also, Spring MVC populates the values into the right category instance and makes that available to the controller. Run the application. Using similar URLs as for user, you can access the create category page. You can add a new category, view it, and edit it. Let's do the same thing for the product entity now. The product also happens to have name and description attributes, so you can pretty much copy the category controller and the category JSP pages and replace category occurrences with product. Deploy the code and you can access the product, create, view, and edit pages. They are exactly the same as category pages, except that they work on product entities and data goes to the product table in the database. This is good, but the product has a few more attributes. One of them is the category to which the product belongs to. What would you need to do to add category info to these pages? First, the product view page needs to show the category name that the product belongs to. Second, the create and edit pages need to show the list of available categories to choose from as a dropdown. Let's code that now. In the product controller class, define a new member variable for category service and mark it auto wired. Like we've done before, we are using the auto wired annotation to have Spring inject an instance for us automatically. We need this to pull up the list of all categories before we show the create or edit pages. Then in the controller methods that lead to the create and edit pages, which are the create form and the edit form methods, make a call to the category service dot get all categories method and save it to the model attribute categories. Now the categories list is available in the JSPs for us to use. To use the list to prepare the dropdown, you could loop through the elements and generate a dropdown in HTML, but there is a better way. Spring MVC has a form colon select tag that accepts a set of items, which is the categories model attribute that you just set. Give it the label and value properties of category that the dropdown should have. 
The path attribute is used the same way as in the input tag, identifying the member variable of the product that this value binds to. And that's it, Spring MVC takes care of the rest. Now we are left with three more properties of product. Price and image path are straightforward text inputs which you already know how to work with. That leaves the featured Boolean property. Again, we can use the Spring MVC's form colon checkbox tag support. The binding works just like a text box, but it shows a checkbox instead. Deploy and run the application. Access the product create page, create and edit a product to see the code working. In this tutorial, you've learned how to work with entities that are dependent on other entities. You also learn how to use Spring MVC form support for form controls like dropdowns and checkboxes. In the next video, you will learn how to implement theming support using Spring MVC. See you in the next video.